Who the hell are you? A remnant of the time long past. There has been an awakening. It's the Riley and Kimmy Show. Have you felt it? Well, hello out there. It's me, Winnie the Pooh. And don't forget to remember to stay tuned to the Riley and Kimmy Show. And don't forget to remember to keep on bouncing, says Tigger. <laughs> yeah, that's right. Keep on bouncing. Welcome to 429. I am your host, Patrick Riley. Right next to me is the traveling companion. That's right. The person who sits in or actually stands or sometimes sleeps in the TARDIS, our version of the TARDIS, and it is is, and I'm referring to you as an it, a willing traveler, correct? Mm-hmm. That's right. It is our companion. Kimmy! I got one name. Kimmy! She seems nice. You don't. Hey, I am quite nice, and you'll be able to find out how nice I am if you uh, run into us in one of the uh, conventions. Maybe you ran into us at a convention uh, today when this show has been uploaded. Maybe you uh, just ran into us in uh, Jacksonville. Uh, yeah, maybe you said, hey, he's not that bad of a guy. Kimmy's exaggerating just how nasty he is, <laughs> right? That's that's a possibility. Or or possibly you're saying this. Isn't he a gorgeous hunk of superhero? Yes, that's true, especially if you've noticed that T-shirt that I posted on social media, the uh, shirt that I posted, uh, a certain, uh, well, a certain heritage shirt of mine, in a way, isn't it, Kimmy? Oh, yeah, one of my favorite ones. Yes, it's sort of a heritage shirt. That's right. It's an Irish shirt. And it's a, you know, it's a St. Patrick's Day shirt that just happens to be one of Kimmy's favorites. They're magically delicious. That's, They're magically delicious. That's right. Just about to bounce right off the shirt is a leprechaun, isn't he? Mm-hmm. Now, Kimmy's described this uh, shirt before, I think, in episode 428. Mm-hmm. Um, and, uh, well, you know, people were asking me, hey... What does this shirt actually look like? So I posted it on social media and we linked it right on our website. You can check it out for yourself. And you know what? The shirt has some fans. I'm telling you that much. Yeah. I mean, it does. And some extremely talented individuals are just digging that shirt. Mm -hmm. A master of steampunk. The head of Phantasmagoria Orlando loves that shirt. Yeah. You know, I wonder if his special dancing companion would like it if I give her a copy of that shirt because I have a couple in reserve by the way I found oh do you think she would like that I'm sure I I, I bet she would would yeah. you and also our good friend the professor of cosplay Marco just loves that shirt and you know and he's really into costuming and things and he has he has just excellent taste mm -hmm. so has that swayed you yet those two fans of that shirt no you you don't uh, agree with them at all? No. Well, you can find out for yourself if you like that shirt or not. You can see if you agree with Kimmy or me. I, I, think, it's, I think it's cute. And I don't want to throw it away, Kimmy. And you want me to toss that shirt. Mm -hmm. I love that shirt. Matter of fact, I'm thinking about putting it in a, like a plexiglass protector. You know, mm -hmm. one of these shadow box things that I have. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you know, I have a WLS shirt that I got as a kid from WLS Chicago mm -hmm. um, that I won on that radio station, matter of fact. That's there. Maybe I could put it right next to that in honor, the two of them. What do you think? Mm, no. All right. Well, you can find out more about the shirt right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. I'm starting my own convention. Uh, you don't need to start your own convention. There's a very big convention happening in Central Florida. That's coming up, let's see, Kimmy, just about less than a month away. It's not quite, but it's right at that mm -hmm. month corridor. Right about a month. That's uh -huh. right, in April. And it's going to be April 10th, 11th, and 12th. And it is what convention, Kimmy? MegaCon. Yes, MegaCon convention. Huge convention in Central Florida. Now, it is a place for anime comic books, cosplay, oh, you just name it, mm -hmm. pop culture based. It is right there. It's basically a kind of a nerd hangout for people that, you know, like the Riley and Gimme show. Mm -hmm. Celebrities. Yes, that's true. In fact, a new one just uh, announced. Well, Kimmy, you are moving ahead of the game here, but that's fine. Oh, I'm Go sorry. No, that's all right. We'll just, hey, since we do not talk these out ahead of time, what we're going to talk about, that's perfect. I was going to throw that one to you because I knew you discovered this. Who, if you notice how I said that, who is the new celebrity? 
Well, it's the actress, an actress who has been in a prominent role in Doctor Who as well as Arrow. And ER. And ER. You forgot that, didn't you? Come That's on, admit true. Shame That's true. That's where I first knew her from. Shame on you. Mm-hmm. Yeah, she plays an Arrow. She mm-hmm. plays the mother of... Oh, this is good. She plays the mother of... Laurel and Sarah. Yes, you did mm-hmm. it. Okay. And she plays in Doctor Who as... River Song. That's right. And she's going to be, I can't believe this, at Megacon, mm-hmm. the big convention in Orlando. That was just announced, too, mm-hmm. shortly before we sat down to record episode 429 of the Riley and Kimmy show. Now, let's see. From Doctor Who, right now confirmed, we have whom? Karen Gillan. <laughs> also from uh, Guardians of the Galaxy. And uh, the actor that plays Rory. Yeah. Why? I can't think of his name. No. Uh, is it Arthur uh, something? Yeah, that, that one. Y- yeah. You, somebody we're going to meet. Uh-huh. Let's put it that way. Okay. And we have River Song, their daughter in a way, when you think about it. Yeah. Whoa, that's kind of weird. Do you think, do you speculate, Kimmy, that... Oh, Meg- that would be so cool. Do you think Megacon Orlando is possibly going to announce another Doctor I hope, Who I hope, I hope. individual? Who would you like that? Matt Smith. Oh, I, Tom Baker for me. <laughs> I'm... I would love Tom Baker, but I wouldn't do that to Kimmy. Kimmy just like, yeah, I, oh boy, David Tennant. I, I don't, David Tennant or Matt Smith. I don't know which one I, if I had to choose one or the other. Oh, if I had to choose? Yeah. David Tennant. I do, see, I'm I'm one of those, and yes, my Doctor Who friends, and I have quite a few, that, you know, I, I don't really know that many that like Matt Smith, but I like Matt Smith, all mm-hmm. right? So I'm not sure. Yeah, I like, the Day of the Doctors is the one I love, okay? the, the So I got, because I got them both, you know, it's cool. Uh yeah, I that would be that'd be great. Mm-hmm. Please don't make it somebody who was in the, uh, you know, Cyberman suit or something. <laughs> <laughs> no, in, ep- in episode two hundred nineteen. No, mm-hmm. no, 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 no. Make it make it one of the doctors. You know, hey, what Eccleson, right? Mm-hmm. We'll, yeah, we'll take Eccleson. We'll take. Let's see, Kimmy wants. Uh, let's see, Tenant first. Mm-hmm. Probably Matt Smith second. Mm-hmm. Eccleson third, right? Yeah. And for me, Tom Baker. <laughs> okay, please, because I'd love to have a photo with Tom Baker. That'd just be really cool. Mm-hmm. Yeah, wouldn't it? Uh huh. I'd be really cool. Now, do you have any other special MegaCon announcements? Anything that because you're wired in that's been going on around MegaCon? Nope. All right, I do, Kimmy. Yeah. Yes, I do. Now, I was in communication with the director of operations of MegaCon Orlando, and his name is Jason Smith. Now, I asked a question to Jason before we went on this show because I wanted it verified because there was a little rumor thing going around with all my nerds. I wanted to make uh, you know sure that this wasn't just uh, fantasy talk, that this was reality before we we went to it. You know, with it on the Riley and Kimmy show. Now, the question I asked him was about uh, picking up tickets in advance. As Kimmy knows, and anybody who's been to MegaCon before, one of the things about MegaCon, the way it has been, is the day of the event is a day you would get your ticket the first time. Or Mm -hmm. your your, uh, wristbands. Mm -hmm. Or passes or badges or whatever you're picking up. Well, that's kind of changed. I asked the question, and here's the answer I got. Quote from Jason Smith. You are correct. This year we are opening up the advanced ticket counters on Thursday, April 9th from 4 p.m. until 7 p.m. for anyone that purchased wristbands in advance. We hope this will help us with the big rush we always encounter on Friday morning with advanced ticket pickup and has also been something everyone has been asking us to do for the past few shows. Have a great weekend. Jason Smith, Director of Operations, Megacon, unquote. Excellent. Yes, fantastic. A big round of applause for Megacon. <laughs> now, it's obvious they're open to suggestions. Mm-hmm. Now, I have a suggestion for Megacon. Oh? Oh, this step was a good step. I'm going to add one more. Mm-hmm. Mail tickets. You know, I would pay 50 bucks to have advanced tickets mailed. Wow. 
I mean, mail. I mean, I would pay. Maybe some people they say that's too steep, but just mail them, and maybe, maybe you'll get towards the barcode scan, um, similar like a Disney type thing, or some of the theme parks use, not Disney necessarily. Mm -hmm. uh, so there's no, you know, fraud or anything can be dealt with. I believe certain conventions, like Chicago, I think uses that. I was talking to my good friend Taylor, the owner of uh, Nerdropolis Comics. In Ormond Beach, we talked about that. That, I think, would be an excellent thing to do. It will also trim down those lines even more. Mm -hmm. And uh, I just, uh, it'd, be, it'd be worth it to me. Mm -hmm. You know, so offer, and, and make it so it's worth it to compensate Megacon to actually make them extra manpower and et cetera to do that. You know, don't make everybody's is that way. Mm -hmm. But, you know, if you can pay extra, yeah, you get it for mm -hmm. that. But you got to pay for it. You know, so I, I, there's a suggestion, friendly suggestion. I think that'd be kind of cool, don't you? Mm -hmm. All right. So, but once again, another round of applause for MegaCon. They they just went out of their way. I think they did good there. <laughs> now, I am really looking forward to this year. A lot of our nerd friends are going to be there. We got nerd cosplay freaks that are going to be hanging out with us, and I mean that in a fun way. They are freaks, and they're they're good friends. And we have the professor of cosplay who will be checking in with us with reports and things like that. And with the Riley and Kimmy show, this is going to be a fantastic, fun event, and we'll keep you updated the best we can. And you can help out because we have a phone number available right to the Riley and Kimmy show right on our website. You can phone in reports and stuff. Say, you know, tell us things that you like at MegaCon, and I mean, and that you uh, things to really check out. You know, let's say you go Friday and you say, "Hey, man," or "This is blah blah blah." You know, check in with us. Matter of fact, you could do that right now if you like to tell us what you're going to look for in advance. What artist do you want to see? You know, is there a specific drawer out there that you want to, you know, meet for the very first time? Like George Perez who will be there or somebody else maybe you want to meet? Maybe some uh, celebrity that mm -hmm. you're really looking forward to? Uh, or maybe a certain panel. Maybe you want to go to a certain panel or something. Tell us about it. Give us a heads up a little bit. Say, hey, Riley and Kimmy, I think you might want to check out this. Mm -hmm. And I, we will, first of all, check it out. But second of all, we'll make you part of the Riley and Kimmy show. And during Megacon, you can call in and give us that information. Also, friend us on any form of our social media outlets that are right on our website at RileyandKimmy.com. We can stay linked. And, you, you know, if you're at Megacon, we're going to be at Megacon. I'm going to be wired in. Kimmy's going to be wired in. And you can say, hey, this is the this is the thing, man. You got to check this out. Or, you know, feel free to send us photos and things like that. And we'll add it right to our, uh, our, our pages and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. We'll make you, you part of the Riley and Kimmy show. Now, Kimmy, it's time for me to move over to uh, something that was announced Oh, well, a little bit before we sat down for episode 429, and that revolves around a costume for a certain superhero. Wait a minute, wait one minute. I mean, you can do the whole number, leap tall buildings with a single bound, and look right through things? Yes. Ben steel bars? Yes. Like Superman. He's my cousin. Yes. Whoa. <laughs> Just like my cousin. Whoa. <laughs> that is not from the new Super... Uh, Supergirl movie. That's our TV show. That's from the original Supergirl movie from 1984. Wow. And by the way, the, who played Supergirl in that movie will be part of the TV series. Hmm. And, you know, uh, Dean Cain is going to be part of the TV series really? as well. Yes, he is. Hmm. I, or as my friend Taylor from Nerdtropolis says, he goes, isn't there a bunch of old people that used to be in some Superman stuff that are going to be... <laughs> <laughs> hey, anybody over 25 or 30 over 30 he's he's got the logan's run rule going anybody that's over 30 is old you oh. know to taylor remember that you know oh, okay uh, is that old dude that uh, some other old people in <laughs> <laughs> and by the way if you don't know what i'm talking about with taylor check out our uh episode with taylor episode 425 we talk about pop culture comic books movies and all kinds of things and that's kind of a fun thing when we visited uh, Taylor at Nerdtropolis Comics in Ormond Beach. Now, Kimmy, my big question for you. You are our official, unofficial critic, reviewer. You're not getting a dime for this. You are not, you're not owing a favor to anybody. Now, I'm holding up to camera one for Kimmy's eyes here. The picture of Supergirl in costume. And tell me, what, now we have not talked about this. What do you think of the new costume of for supergirl meh really now what's wrong with it what what don't you like about this at all 
Um, it just looks, I don't know. I just, it just doesn't do anything for me. Now, do you have a problem with the actress playing it so far? We don't know how, what her performance will be like, but image wise, what you, what you do. Just the whole thing, the whole image looks too dark. Okay. Now. Her, the costume. eh, Okay. Well, the costume for Supergirl was designed by Colleen Atwood, who also designed the costumes for Arrow and The Flash, and whose motion picture credits include the Academy Awards for work on Alice in Wonderland, Memoirs of a Geisha, and Chicago, as well as eight additional Oscar nominations for films such as Into the Woods, Snow White and the Huntsman, Sweeney Todd, and Sleepy Hollow. If you note, all dark things for the most part. Mm -hmm. Now, Atwood stated... Quote, in designing Supergirl, I wanted to embrace the past, but more importantly, thrust her into the street-style action hero of today. Now, I'd like to know how that skirt there Mm -hmm. is today. Yeah. I mean, it looks like she's tried to fuse the 1959 Supergirl crawling out of the rocket to see Superman with that skirt thing. And the darker tones in that, I just, I, I agree with you there. Uh, Mm -hmm. I I don't know about the actress, okay? I'm not talking about the actress playing. I'm talking about the suit itself, Mm -hmm. the the costume. Um, Too dark. And Supergirl should be bright, in Mm -hmm. my opinion. Full of light. Mm -hmm. Um, And it's also one of the problems I have with The Flash. As I love The Flash, by the way. I like The Flash better than Arrow now. I've been reading and hearing that they're going to be giving Flash a new suit. I assume it'll be brighter. Anyhow, yeah, that's going to be brightened up. But this, I'm... You know, I doubt they will in that case. And I just, I do not like this costume. Mm. And, you mm-hmm. know, what's interesting, the cosplayers, a lot of the cosplayers, and I'm talking high-end cosplayers, mm-hmm. they like this thing. Okay. Okay. And, I mean, good comments about it. Mm-hmm. Um, it seems like non-cosplayers, comic book geeks, uh, maybe the film, TV show superhero freaks do not like it. Mm. That's what's kind of interesting. Mm-hmm. And from what I can tell, this is unscientific. It, it seems like a split. It's right almost 50-50 that it's, you know, guys don't like it and, 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 and women don't like it as well th- that don't like it. You know, it's not like all guys dislike it or all women dislike it or anything like that. Mm-hmm. But cosplay, why? They, they seem to like it. I should have asked our professor of cosplay what he thought of it because, you know, he's into costume design himself and mm-hmm. got his opinion. What about the actress? I don't know. I don't know. Not no. a blonde. How, I, do you, how do you feel about that? Um, well, see, I in in as you know, I'm a big fan of the Silver Age of superheroes, and when and there's been different Supergirls, by the way. So understand, I'm not going to get into the complexities of the different Supergirls and and that. And there's been different versions of her also in. And I'm talking about different Supergirls in storylines and comic books. And there's also been different versions of Supergirl, like Bruce Timm's Supergirl looks different, you know, with the white top and uh, very uh, uh, teenage uh, look, uh, different versions. And then, of course, the 1959 classic version where she's popping out of the uh, the rocket ship and, you know, Superman's right there and who's my cousin, <laughs> you know, kind of thing. She's been blind in most of the comic book stuff. And 1959 is an example, her secret identity. Uh, she would wear a brown wig mm-hmm. to hide her identity. Uh, I don't know if that's what that is, mm. that she's just trying out the costume, you know, wearing the brown wig. I don't know. Mm. So I cannot judge that yet. You know, okay. I'm keeping an open mind. I hope Supergirl, if they're staying close to like a 59 version mixed in with some modern era versions, yeah, I hope she is blonde. Okay. In that. Now, you know, and to be quite honest, I would not have had a problem with them making it, uh, making the character not uh, Caucasian. Okay. Um, if they had chosen to go on that route, I would have been totally supportive of that. But if they're trying to, you know, stay with something of an image of the past, mixing, then I think they need to do that. Mm-hmm. that that's where, you know, I go with it. So. You know, I, but once again, I would not have had a problem with them actually changing that part. Hmm. You know, so I, I don't, you're not that really familiar with Supergirl, are you? You have cosplayed to Supergirl, but I mean, you didn't really read her in comic books or anything like at all. Or, and I think you've seen some of Bruce Timm's stuff mm-hmm. uh, before, but so you're, and you never saw that 1984 no. Super 
girl movie, right? No. Don't. That's all I have to <laughs> say. A, a friend of ours, which is it's just so strange, a friend of ours, David Coperone, the uh, commissioner, as he's called, his nickname, uh, of Sm- co-owner of Smash Comics and Games in Sanford, Florida, he actually is proud to state that he has a copy of that. Mm-hmm. He's met her before and has an autograph from uh, Helen Slater, who played Supergirl. Mm-hmm. And he, at times, he will show that movie to people who want to be subjected to it. Okay. And he's offered me to uh, to give it to me, to bring it to our Batcave to play for you. And I said, no, there are certain things that I won't do. And one of them is play Supergirl for Kimmy. Okay. No Supergirl. So, All right. you know, <laughs> because I want you to still on occasion cosplay a Supergirl. Okay. Now, here's a question I have for you real quick. This Supergirl, they've, they've stated in press releases and stuff like that. Do you know what her age is supposed to be? Isn't this an older? That's what I was going to ask you about that. Is she is 24 before she becomes Supergirl. Shouldn't she be Superwoman? Mm-hmm. I, I mean, I'm being, I'm, I know that's, I mean, yeah. I, you know, I, I think she should have been younger. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah. And similar to what Smallville did, I think they should have kind of done a little mm-hmm. bit. Not the hokey, soap opery kind of episodes and things like that, uh, which, and drippy you know, example, have an adventure for 35 minutes and then sip coffee and talk about it for mm. 10 you mm-hmm. know, or 15. Mm-hmm. None of that. You know, by the way, I don't think they'll tap into this because I think this one character is going to be off limits. But the, in the Supergirl mythos, Superman, Supergirl mythos, there is a version of Supergirl that is girlfriend to Lex Luthor. Okay. Lex Luthor and her are romantically involved, and he's using that relationship one as uh, you know protection a little bit okay. from Superman, and also it's a cool twisted storyline because he actually hates her. Okay, uh, he hates all Kryptonians, all extraterrestrials, mm-hmm. and you know his goal is to get rid of them. So she's with truly the enemy, the devil. And it's a cool storyline from that. Okay. And, you know, Superman knows that he is a bad guy. He just can't prove it in those storylines. Mm-hmm. And because uh, Luther is a very successful businessman and protects himself, he's layered. And it's very hard to catch him. It'll actually be in ways up to Clark Kent to get Lex Luthor, not Superman. Okay. To bring him down. Cool storylines. I don't think they'll touch Lex Luthor because of the movies. You know, mm-hmm. I think he'll be one of those that just, he might be referenced to. And by the way, Superman is supposed to be in the TV series. They've done a casting call for Superman. But most likely, people are speculating it'll be the costume we see in the movies with somebody else doubling for Henry. Okay. And it'll be, you know, I don't know if they'll just show the boots. Now, in Supergirl, the movie, what they did is uh, Christopher Reeves was supposed to be in the movie. Okay. They tried, but he they they had a fallout. He and the producers, and they didn't want to cough up extra cash or something. Something happened, and he said, "No, I'm not going to be in that movie." And he okay. exercised whatever clause he had, but he is in the movie. What they did is they put a Superman poster in mm. a uh, uh, a dorm room. They mm-hmm. showed that. Okay. That's how they got around it. So he's technically in Super in uh, Supergirl, but our good friend David, as I said, does. Have that. He's proud of it. And next time you see him, if you go to uh, Smash Comics, say, hey, let's uh, take a look at Supergirl. And I'll make him happy. And I hope that is in the very near future because our good friend David has taken ill and has been uh, battling all kinds of things and is really needing your help. Let's check in with David here and hear what is going on. Hello. Welcome to the Riley and Kimmy show. Hey, Riley and Kimmy. This is David, the commissioner calling from Smash Comics and Games in Sanford. As uh, as you may know, I've briefly run into a spot of bad luck with my health. Uh, I went into the emergency room for an infection in my foot, and I had uh, septic blood, and they also found a uh, heart problem with a clot in my heart. So after spending nearly a month in the hospital, I get home to find out that my roommate, uh, who shall not be named, <laughs> is moving out in uh, five days, which actually turned out to be two, so with no notice. So I sort of got stranded here 
uh, with double the bills and a lot of hospital money running in. Uh, and uh, at the moment, not being able to go to work, no income to pay for it. So I've already eaten through my savings. So I put a GoFundMe up on, on the Internet by asking for donations. Uh, I'm, I'm a, a proud person. don't usually like to ask for help, but right now I certainly need it. So uh, I believe uh, the Riley and Kenny show has a link to my GoFundMe on the page um, that you can go check out. And if you uh, can do anything to help out, I would greatly appreciate it. Thanks so much, and thank you, uh, Riley and Kenny. Keep up the good shows. Well, thank you, David. We deeply appreciate you saying that. And, uh, you know, something that just before we sat down to the uh, Riley and Kimmy show, episode 429, David posted the following on uh, his Facebook page, quote, just got another bill in the mail, this time from the anesthesiologist for $1,899.77. Wow. Mm -hmm. And... Uh, I was with David on Thursday, uh, took him to a, uh, a specialist that he had to check in with, and we spent some some time together. Uh, you know, he is a fighter. I have to say that much for him. I mean, uh, he's not letting this get him down at all. And, you know, truly in a way, and, and he is our version of Superman. Mm-hmm. And this is your chance to help save Superman. This is a chance for you to be a superhero, to show that you are a super friend. You can help the co-owner of Smash Comics because we want that world of Smash that we've fallen in love with to remain the same and to grow and to be better. And we want David to be part of it. And a way for David to be part of it is, uh, you know, to make sure that everything's taken care of in in that uh, that private world Mm -hmm. that he's actually pulled back the curtain on to show everybody. You know, he's done the the Wizard of Oz thing here. Mm -hmm. And so he really needs your help. And if you're a fan of Superman, you have to help David. Yeah, you really do because David is truly the commissioner because he is Commissioner David Colperone. And yes, that is the comic book character in the Superman mythos. And matter of fact, David was, I, could, what would you say he was the inspiration, I guess? Mm-hmm. Right? He was the inspiration for the character that first appeared in Superman 4, February 2012. And that was created by writer George Perez, who just happens to be a very good friend of David's. Now, the character, however fictional, is based on the real person that George has been friends with for a number of years. Now, David, the real person, the real David Corporone, is a co-owner of Smash Comics and Games in Seminole Town Shopping Center that's in the mall in Sanford, Florida. Now, in the Superman mythos, David Corberone is depicted as commissioner of the Metropolis Police Department. Matter of fact, I have, I think, photos. As a matter of fact, I'll share those some real soon of David cosplaying as that character. And by the way, if you want to see what we're talking about, the relationship between David and George... I posted a video, which is on our website right now at RileyandKimmy.com and also on social media from Megacon 2012, February 2012, where George Perez gives David a sketch, an original sketch of him as the commissioner of the Metropolis Police Force that is in Superman Comics. And, of course, it is signed by George. And George presents that to him. He sees it for the very first time at Megacon. And I didn't know that was going to happen. He didn't know that was going to happen. George is, you know, going about doing his his convention stuff, you know, signing things. And he's actually doing some commission artwork. And David and I and the group just happened to go up to where George is to say, hey. And George sees David and lights up and stops what he's doing and gets that drawing and gives it to David. And you can actually see the joy that comes to David with that and actually tears that start to come to his eyes. Mm -hmm. That was a very cool moment. Yes, it is. And if you don't believe me that David loves comic books, and by the way, he is one of the, the biggest fans of Superman I know on planet Earth. Uh, I also posted that is available on our website and through social media an auction because David, because he knows comic books so well and because he is connected with comic book artists and individuals in the industry, he was a representative for somebody, a proxy for a big uh, auction for Heroes Initiative. Uh, They auctioned off original artwork by people like John Romita and others. George was another in there. And I was a guest to this. I was with David and I videoed that 
and I have this action going on. Some of it, I, I have. If you want to watch the whole thing, I have a link to the the whole auction. But I have the parts cut down with David real quick, and you get to see some beautiful art and just catch the fun that was going on at MegaCon, and you get to see how alive David is, how passionate he is, and how much fun he has around the world of comic books. And I really don't want to see that come to an end. So please help us save our Superman. Mm -hmm. And you know, raindrops, they make floods. So David needs a flood. He needs your help. And if you can help, we have a link to his funding. And you can go right to our website at RileyandKimmy.com and make a donation today. Mm -hmm. And it will be deeply appreciated. Yes, please help David. That's right. Please help him out. Now, right now, Kimmy, you know, um, I want to do a quick thing in case you uh, just encountered the Riley and Kimmy show for the very first time, maybe up in Jacksonville, and you're like, what is a Riley and Kimmy show all about? I think we should just tell people real quick if they haven't figured out by listening to this show what our show's all about, right? That's right. Okay. One of the things our show is all about, as you can find out at any time, matter of fact, even our website, because our website is updated 24-7 around the clock. One of the things that we uh, talk about is comic books and superheroes. And what are some of the other things, Kimmy? Comic stores. Oh, yes. We talk about comic stores, comic strips. Anime. Yes, animation. Cosplay. Movies. TV. Blu-ray. Music. Oh, yes. Celebrities. Conventions, um, toys, collectibles, nostalgia, pop culture, escapism. That's right. And you can find all our archived podcasts and our daily podcasts when they get updated. That's right. That's something I need to stress to people. They go, oh, you, you don't do this just once a week or once in a while. No, we do this every, every day. day. There's not a holiday for us. It's seven days. That's right. We do it every day. That's right. 24, well, not quite. We're not here 20. Well, the show is 24 7, mm-hmm. but we're not recording 24 7. No. Uh, but every day, whether we're sick or not, <laughs> well, I'm sick all the time. And we, no, I'm kidding. Um, we're, we're here all the time. Uh-huh. And what is our website, Kimmy? RileyandKimmy.com. That's right. Be sure to tell your friends about that. That kind of explains what we are. And if you like what we are, please share it. Please share our website, share our social media links, and be sure to friend us, follow us, and like us because we do the same right back. Now, speaking of David, which we just did a little bit ago, and Supergirl and how David likes uh, Supergirl and also Superman, I thought what we do is something very special because this show is being uploaded on a Saturday. And what is Saturday typically in the past when we were kids, Kimmy? It was a cartoon Saturday, right? That's right. Well, that's gone. That doesn't happen anymore, right? Yeah. That world doesn't exist. But you know what? The Riley and Kimmy show is stepping up to the plate to bring all that back. That's right. That's what we're going to do. It's sort of like a Saturday morning cartoon thing, regardless of the day of the week that you listen to this or the hour. This is a job for Superman. Up, up, and away. Yes, it is, because it's that Saturday thing going on, and also because David just loves Superman. And matter of fact, he's in Superman, I thought we'd do a tribute and we would go back in time to the golden age of radio, old time radio, OTRs it's called, to all those hobbyists and collectors, and we will play an episode of Superman going back almost 75 years to the date we upload this. Mm -hmm. Almost right, I mean almost, March 11th, 1940 we're going back to with Bud Collier as Clark Kent's Superman. And the episode's called Aboard the Steamship Madison. And by the way, this is safe for the entire family, the kids. You know, if you got some little ones that are really kind of curious about Superman and the upcoming movies and stuff like that, this is this is perfect for them. So check it out, and I, you will enjoy it. And tell your friends about it. It's Aboard the Steamship Madison, The Adventures of Superman from March 11th, 1940, on the Riley and Kimmy Show. Presenting the transcription feature, Superman. Up in the sky! Look! It's a bird! It's a plane! It's Superman! Mysterious visitor from another world who has appeared on Earth as the champion of the weak and the oppressed. When we last saw Superman in his character of Clark Kent, news reporter for the Daily Planet, he had just learned that the two swindlers, Bartley Pemberton and Joseph Deneen, were heading south in a high-speed cruiser in order to catch up with the freight steamer Madison on her way to Charleston. As our story continues today, Superman is winging his way down the coast, straining his eyes for the first glimpse of the powerboat or the freighter. But Pemberton and Deneen have caught up with the Madison. 
Four sharp blasts of their whistle, red rockets, distress signals. And the freighter is motionless in the black water, waiting for the smaller boat to come alongside. On the deck of the cruiser, Bartley Pemberton gives a last quick order to the man at the wheel. Listen. Pay attention, sailor. Okay, Captain. Make it fast, Bart. They're dropping a ladder over the side. Head her in there, sailor. And get this. I'm listening. We're going on board that freighter to get something, you understand? If we don't get it, there may be trouble. Big trouble. So what? So stick around to pick us up. We'll want to make a fast getaway, so stay close. Ready to beat it. Get set, Pod. What do we do now? Stand by to grab that ladder, Joe. All right, sailor. Ahoy on that cruiser. We're waiting for you. Don't worry. You won't wait long. Go ahead, sailor. Edge in toward that ladder. All right, Mr. Burns. Hold her under a dead slow bell. We see what's wrong with those fellows. Aye, aye, Captain Anderson. Ahoy down there. What about the cruiser? What's wrong with her? Captain, sir, two men are coming up the ladder. They want to see you. They want to see me? Ask them what they mean by sounding distress signals. Well, there they are, Captain. Coming over the rail now. What do you want done with them? They better have a mighty good reason for stopping us, Mr. Burns. If they haven't, I'll put them in irons. Ahoy there. Bring those two men up to my cabin. Anybody else coming aboard? No, sir. They say that's all. Mr. Burns, hold us steady. Steady she is, sir. Keep an eye on the weather, Mr. Burns. It's thickening up. Very good, sir. Sound your foghorn while we're hove to. Have Mr. Rolson bring those men to my cabin. And a few moments later, Pemberton and Deneen are ushered to Captain Anderson's cabin. Come in. Here they are, sir, the two men off the cruiser. Come in, gentlemen. Oh, Captain. Am I addressing Captain Vincent Anderson? Yes, sir, you are. Captain, my friend and I have followed your ship, the Madison, all the way down the coast, hoping to catch up with you. Do you know you've stopped a vessel on government service? Government service? I thought this was a freighter, a tramp. Thank you for your description of it, sir. As it happens, we're carrying munitions. Munitions? Well, isn't that a bit dangerous, Captain? Don't worry. Transporting gun cotton and TNT isn't half as dangerous as giving false signals of distress, as you'll find out. Just let us explain, Captain. Captain Anderson, we've been sent by your sister, June. Before you sailed, she gave you a certain package of papers, didn't she? Sealed in oilskin? What of it? Are they in that safe there in the wall? What business is it of yours? Your sister told us to get them. So if it isn't too much trouble, Captain... One moment, mister. I suppose my sister gave you written instructions. Uh, A letter? Well? No, as a matter of fact, she didn't. She didn't have time. Oh, she didn't have time. Well, I'm sorry, gentlemen, but I don't believe you. No, look here, Captain. Say, listen. I say I don't believe you. If this thing was so all-fired important, you'd follow me down the coast, make use of fake distress signals to get me to pick you up. You ought to be able to prove what you say. Listen, Captain, we've got to have those papers. You'll get them when we land at Charleston. And I've talked with my sister by phone, but not until then. Is that so, Captain Anderson? Stand where you are, please. Why, you... What do you mean, pulling a gun on me? I mean business, Captain. Keep your hands up. All right, Joe, get after that safe. You'll land in prison for this. Quiet, please. Well, what about it, Joe? Nothing doing, Bart. Have to blow. Didn't he say there was soup in the hold? That's right. Carrying munitions, aren't you, Captain? Show us how to get to the hold. Find out for yourself. I said take us to the hold, Captain. I'm not fooling. Open the door, Joe. Now listen to me, Captain Anderson. You're going to take us down along the deck and into the hold. No, I'll be shot if I will. You'll be shot if you don't. We've come a long way, Captain, and done a good deal to make sure of those papers, and we won't stop now. Not even at murder. Get going. Go on. Keep moving. I'm right behind you, Captain, with this pistol in my pocket. If we meet any of your crew, keep quiet. All right, now move. Out of the captain's cabin, along the deck, and into the echoing stillness of the hold. All right, this will do nicely. Just sit down now and take it easy, Captain, while Mr. Deneen makes you comfortable. Tie him up, Joe. What are you going to do, Bart? Carry some stuff back up to the cabin and blow the safe? No, no, it'll take too much time. As long as those papers are destroyed, as long as they're lost, we're all right. But if you don't get them out of the safe... They'll remain in the safe, and the safe will remain on the ship, and the ship will be blown to pieces. Blown up? What do you mean to do, you murdering pirate? What I mean to do, Captain Anderson, is to remove every trace of you and your ship. Why, you'd never dare. You're out of your mind. You're a plain man. Help! 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 Go on, it's Help! Hit him over the head. Help! Help! Nothing to shoot him, Bob. Ah, it's too noisy. They might hear us. Listen, are you really going to blow up the whole boat? Why not? Quick, we'll set a fire right down here. Far enough off to give us time to get away ourselves. And then we'll beat it. Nobody will ever know. Here, help me break into this case. It's more dangerous. Keep away from fire. 
Is it all right? All right. Now rip open these sacks. Spread it all around the floor. That's the way. All right, now, now make a little trail over to the door where we came in. I'll help you. Where are you going to build a fire? If you started here, we'd be caught ourselves. Don't be a fool. How's our friend? Out like a light. But he won't stay that way. We won't have to. Five minutes is all we need. All right, now give me a hand. We're going to build a fire. Work fast. A flickering glow in the darkness of the hold. A thin spiral of smoke creeping up the companionway and curling out above the hatch covers on deck. Then sudden alarm, shouting and confusion. Wild ringing of alarm bells and frantic orders. Hey, where's the captain? Where's the mate? Jump! Jump! She's full of gunpowder. We haven't got a chance. Fire! There's fire coming up under the hatch. Mr. Burns, what do we do? All the way to starboard boats. Where's Captain Anderson? All the way and stand by to abandon ship. Well, all right. All right, Joe, that does it. Listen, Bart, we better be getting out of here. That's your life preserver? Yeah. Look, look, there's the cruiser cutting through the fog. Come on, Joe, over the rail. Jump for it and swim. Come on. Fire aboard the steamer Madison, loaded with high explosive shells and TNT. Bolts go over the side, pull frantically for safety. And meanwhile, high up in the night sky, Superman sees a glow on the sea and heads swiftly downward. What's that? Looks like a fire on the water. And it looks like the Madison, too. Down we go. Down, down. It is the Madison. She's a fire, and the men have taken to the boats. I'll swing down and make sure they're all right. They won't see me in the fog. Come on, pull. Pull hard. Mr. Burns, the captain. Where's Captain Anderson? Oh, hi there, Mr. Olson. Is the captain in your boat? No, I thought he was with you. With me? He's still on board. We've got to go back, back. You can't do that, sir. Look at it. She'll go up any second. We can't go back now. Captain's still on board. Have to get him quick. Down along the hull. If he'd been on deck, they'd have seen him. Must be down below. I'll hang on to this porthole and listen. Clinging to the steep, slippery side of the Madison, Superman's keen hearing picks up sounds inside the hull. Pounding. Someone's pounding inside the hull. No time to go up on deck and down the hatchway. I'll drive my way in from here, through the side. I wonder why they left the ship, why they didn't fight the fire. There, almost in, once more. Hey there, who was pounding? Here in the after hold. Get me out quick. Break down the door. There he is. Looks like the captain. I am nitro board. Get out. Get out. Here, hold up. You'll be all right. Oh, he's fainted. TNT, huh? No wonder they abandoned ship. Hey, that fire's getting mighty close. Come along, Captain. Good thing you can't see me. You'll be found floating in the water with a life preserver, and nobody will ever know who saved you. Out we go. Quick! Superman carries the unconscious form of Captain Anderson wraps him in a life preserver, drops him in the sea near the lifeboats, and streaks again for the doomed ship. Touch and go now. That stuff will explode any second. But I've got to find the safe and get those papers. There's the bridge. Down, down. Here we are. This is the captain's cabin, all right. And there's the safe. Well, one smash will open that up. And there's the package. Must be. Wrapped in oil skin, marked June Anderson. Pemberton, this is the time you lose. Now out. Fast. No time for the stairs. Out through the wall. And away. Hey, Mr. Burns. Stop. There's a man floating in the life preserver. It's the captain. It's Captain Anders. Get him aboard. Quick. Pull him over the side. It is the captain. How'd he get out here? Never mind that. Pull! Pull! There goes the ship! We'll never get clear! Pull! Pull! 
Outlined against a sheet of sudden orange flame, the steamer Madison explodes with a crashing roar, fills the sky with screaming shells, scatters flaring embers on the face of the sea. Do the boats get clear? What of Pemberton and Deneen? And meanwhile, what will Superman do with the precious oilskin package of papers? And what do the papers reveal? Tune in with us next time and follow the exciting transcription, Superman. Up in the sky, look, it's a bird, it's a plane, it's Superman! Superman!